Sometimes repairs are elusive. So this is a 2004 Honda Element. The customer has named this vehicle Ellie. And it's been in here before we actually did AC work on it. There's actually a video if you click the link in the description below on diagnosing AC issues. I do apologize for the noises you're hearing in the background. It's kind of a, it's very windy today, like 40 or 50 mile an hour winds. It's not much I can do about it. But this is kind of a video how in a shop, what the customer says or thinks is wrong with their vehicle actually turns up to be something completely unrelated has nothing to do with what the customer thought it should be or what it could be. And again, it's not to blame the customer or say something's wrong with their, di their self-diagnosis of their car. It's just that sometimes things can be very elusive, very completely off a different road or different path than what you would thought. Think about this for a minute. Here's the complaints on the car. It's been losing power for a while and it got to the point where she couldn't even get on an on-ramp that kind of goes uphill onto a highway. It would barely make it to the top. It was so low on power. That's got to be some really low power considering this is Kansas and we have to make on-ramps to get hills. Yeah. It's easy to think this thing is not shifting. It's not doing something right. It's, something's wrong with my transmission. So one of the complaints is it's not shifting, transmissions, making noises, or she made complaints it's making noises when she's at a stop, which kind of makes sense when we t reveal what's wrong with it. Also, she had some complaints about some noises in the back, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The main thing was low on power. Can you imagine you take it to a shop, how many different paths they could go and charge you money for something and completely not even fix your problem? I deal with this a lot anymore. I frequently get emails where I've been to the shop, this shop or that shop. I'm three grand, five grand into this car. I still have the same problem as when I started. I, I'm getting tired of this. And I can, I can understand where you guys are coming from. If I was in your shoes, I would be very upset, very angry. A lot of times the first thing people will do is take it to their local auto parts store and have the code scanned or take it to a shop. What's wrong with my car? And a lot of times the first thing they do will scan for code. So we know it's low on power. It can barely even get on the highway because it's so low on power. Well, there's gotta be codes, right? Let's hop in and see what we find. So we have our handy dandy Autel MS906. We have several of these models of Autels here. This is my favorite. It's the smaller one and it's not wireless. It's nothing fancy. I'm just used to this older one. I guess I'm old fashioned. We also have an MS908 and an IM608, which are much larger units. So we have the scan tool hooked up and based on the description from the customer, it's like, well, there's got to be codes. Let's find out. So the customer has mentioned Transmission issues, possible thoughts of something along those lines. Let's scan the transmission. AT. Go to read codes. Nothing. No fault codes found. Zero. No information. Okay, so let's go back to our menu screen. Well, let's check the engine. There's got to be codes. With the way this thing's driving, there has to be. Read codes. And again, nothing. No fault codes found. So based on the computer on this car, there's nothing wrong. So now what? You've gone to your local parts store. Well, bro, we don't find any codes. We don't know what to do. And imagine you go to a shop that maybe has a little bit less experience or an inexperienced tech working on your car. And this is what they have. Nothing. They have nothing to go on. But you can go out and drive this vehicle. It can barely get up to 50 or 60 miles an hour. It is so low on power. So we'll hop under the hood real quick. We'll check the transmission fluid. If this thing was bad and it's like that bad, the fluid's gonna be black or dark or smelled burned. That'll be a definite indicator that we need to dive deeper. Let's take a look. So on a Honda, one strange thing about them is that you check the transmission fluid with the engine off, not running. So I'll go ahead and pull the little dipstick.
So you can see the fluid, I'll kind of use this white background. It's nice and clean and red. It smells like fresh transmission fluid. There still could be a transmission problem, but after driving it, it goes through all the gears just fine. It downshifts just fine. And our fluid is clean. There are no codes in the transmission. I don't know if it's a transmission issue, but let's talk about it. So, like we usually do, we'll play the game and let you guys guess in the comments what you think it is. With the issue of low power and possible noises at a stoplight, like really low power, what could it be? Is it A, the transmission is on its way out? Is it B, the engine is weak, low on compression, it has some internal issues inside the engine? Or is it C, the catalytic converter is plugged? Or could it be stuck brakes, or the brakes stuck? I'll let you guys choose what you think it is in the comments. Now I have gone through the engine bay and checked all the fluids. The engine's full of oil and clean. Everything is looking good in the engine bay. So let's go ahead and get this thing up on the lift. A suspicion that I had from experience that I know. We're gonna show you how I found out and confirmed my suspicion. So as you can see, it actually has a sticker on the back window that has been featured on Car Wizard Channel before. The customer trusts us. He's used our services many times. Like I mentioned, it was a friend of Mrs. Wizard when she was working in the school district. So she knows she's gonna get a straight answer here and we definitely were able to provide her one with what we found. But before I go up in the air, I want you to know we check the transmission, we check the engine, check various different things and my suspicion leans towards the catalytic converter. But like you know, here at Omega, we don't do the parts cannon. I want some data. So let's get this thing up in the air. So like I mentioned, I've dealt with this problem before. It's not my first time around the block. We're gonna suspect the catalytic converter is plugged because everything else looks good. It wants to run strong, it just can't. It's like it's choking. So I'm gonna remove this rear catalyst monitor O2 sensor. I'm going ahead and unthread it. I have them loosened already. And I'll go ahead and also remove the front one. My mentor years ago when I was working in a shop, he would just take these out just like I just did and go drive it. And if it dramatically improved performance, like night and day difference, then it's a pretty solid answer there. But I like to just look and see what's going on. Let's get our Teshlong. We always like to get our Teshlong out. Wizard, you can't show them your Teshlong on film. No, not that. This thing, look. Teshlong. This is our little camera. I have no idea why they named it that. So I'm gonna show you guys what it should look like. It's kind of a honeycomb matrix type of a ceramic platinum type material in there. So as we can see, there's a nice grid pattern there. That's a nice clean honeycomb structure. It should look like that in all avenues, all directions inside the catalytic converter. Now let's go to the forward section where it possibly could be plugged. If it was plugged, it would be in this area, not back here. Up in the upper right hand corner, you can see a nice cleared section where Danielson actually blew some compressed air. But as you can see, the other honeycomb sections are just plugged. It's like a solid sheet of snow on a snowy day. Okay, wizard, so why is the front one clogged and not the back one? Well, the direction of the exhaust doesn't go up into the engine. It comes from the engine and goes out. So the first surface it's going to contact is right here at the front section of the catalyst material. And that's where if there's any debris or anything, it's probably just old, it's just from age, just years and years of exhaust flowing through it. But it plugged right here on the front section. So can we replace just the front one? Uh, no, this is one solid unit that goes from this flange all the way up to a flange right there, which is on the actual exhaust manifold. And you buy this whole section, which is 
over $700 just for that. So we definitely know that that's plugged. It should be a nice grid pattern in all directions, nice and clean in there, and it is not. It is very plugged up. Let's head on back to the back of the vehicle. So if this was the first time she's been to this shop, it might be thought, or any other shop, it might be thought that those two issues are connected, the clunking and the low on power. But we know from experience that they're not because she's had this clunking before in the rear. It was very intermittent. It would really wouldn't do it. But now it's gotten bad enough where it's very easy to find. And it's this sway bar bushing here. And you can definitely hear it clunking. When you're driving this thing, the rear section with that sway bar bushing being bad, it sounds like something bad is loose. So clunk, 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 it's so loud now. And that's definitely that bushing there. But while we were checking out that bushing, I happened to glance over and I noticed another thing. That strut is coated in oil. It is completely blown. We check the other side. It's not blown yet. And we'll go ahead and replace them in pairs because it's time is coming very soon as well. So now we have a confirmed issue of low power. We also confirmed the clunking and we found an additional issue. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. This is one of those situations, there's two things I'm gonna talk about here, is that you bring a car to a shop and you have one thing in your mind, this is broke, it's gonna probably cost this much to fix it and they come back with this large bill with this situation is going to be over two thousand dollars you're like whoa what happened well while we were looking we found out what's wrong with your cat which it's by itself is over seven hundred dollars and then you add the labor there's half the money a grand we found your clunk and while we were there we saw that your strut is blown out which adds to the bill that was unexpected completely not even one of the complaints but it definitely needs to be addressed. You can see the oil physically coming out of the strut. The bill got large really fast. Now can you imagine how this could go wrong so many ways with the low power issue? Not with the struts or the clunking, but you bring it to a shop and they're like, oh, you need an injector flush. All these services and crap they try to peddle on people. Oh, you need an oil engine flush. You need this and that. Oh, yeah. Or you need new engine bearings, or yes, we'll go along with your diagnosis. Yes, you need a new transmission, it's going to be seven grand. It can go south so fast with these situations. This is something you need to keep in mind when you go to a shop. When they give you an answer of what they think it is, it's, there's nothing wrong with Googling it or saying, is this something that could be really wrong with my vehicle, or are they just taking me for a ride? Maybe call some friends some mechanic buddies you have, kind of research it. Don't always take the shop's word for it because it could be very inaccurate. As we know, a lot of us gearheads that are watching right now, a transmission replacement would solve nothing for this vehicle. And they would be four, five, six, who knows, grand in the hole. Still would be low on power. So that kind of goes with the initial claim at the beginning of this video that repairs can be very elusive, especially with the rattle that we found. It could have been anything, but now that it's gotten worse, we definitely could isolate in. It's not intermittent anymore. It's all the time. And the catalytic converter, when we're driving it and we're low on power, that's not even in our mind. It's like, wow, I didn't even go there. And it was there. And we saw that together on the screen when we looked in the Teschlong we saw it's definitely plugged. So definitely want to do a video for you guys showing you really need to be on your toes with car complaints if you're in a shop or even if you do it yourself and you're helping a friend out, say, hey, my car's doing this. Really need to do some research and get some data together before you start throwing parts. Don't do the parts cannon. It, it rarely ever works. If you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to fix Ellie, or any other car in this shop, check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to check out Mrs. Wizard's Ways. She's got updates on that as well. A lot of cool videos. You really should go and watch them. Click on the link in the description below for that. And make sure to hit the subscribe button here because we have some updates coming soon for the Duramax truck swap and many other cars coming into the shop. Thanks for watching.